Tonight, our special transmission as Israel admits shortage of tanks and ammunition amidst its ongoing war in Gaza. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Muslim News Canada on Muslim Network TV. I'm Aisha Ashraf. Today is the 284th day since Israel started bombing Palestinians indiscriminately. In Gaza, civilians have endured another harrowing night. Israeli forces have launched relentless attacks, killing at least 49 Palestinians. At least 69 have been injured. In central Gaza, the Israeli army has been active since early morning. Airstrikes have targeted the Nusayrat, Azawaida, and Maghazi refugee camps. An Al Jazeera correspondent has reported significant casualties and destruction. At least 19 civilians have been killed. The Israeli military says it is carrying out extensive operations in central Gaza. The Israeli Air Force is targeting 40 sites. Medical teams in Khan Yunis have recovered four bodies and rescued three injured individuals from the rubble of a bombed home. In Rafah, four more bodies have been taken to a local hospital. The Israeli military claims ongoing operations in Rafah have resulted in the deaths of several Hamas fighters. It says the attacks have destroyed the underground tunnels in the area. China will host a meeting of Hamas and Fatah leaders in Beijing on July 20th. The parties will discuss reconciliation between the two Palestinian groups. Turkey condemns Israel for damaging Gaza's only specialized cancer hospital. The death toll from Israeli attacks is staggering. At the time of writing, at least 38,713 Palestinians have been killed by Israeli attacks. A revised report by the United Nations estimates another 10,000 civilians are buried under the rubble. 89,166 civilians are injured. Israel's death toll from Hamas's attacks stands at 1,139. Israel is accused of genocide at the International Court of Justice. The court has ordered Israel to immediately halt its military operations in Rafah. Senior U.S. lawmakers are concerned over the fading prospects of a normalization deal between Israel and Saudi Arabia. They say the deal may not actualize due to the challenges posed by Israel's war and the upcoming U.S. presidential election. Democratic Senator Chris Coons says it is very difficult to secure a deal in a politically charged climate. The Biden administration is pushing for a ceasefire in Gaza, hoping it will pave the way for a normalization agreement with Riyadh. However, Saudi Arabia is insisting on progress towards a two-state solution. Riyadh is negotiating with the U.S. on various diplomatic fronts, including nuclear energy and security pledges. Former Trump administration officials say Saudi Arabia expects Trump to return to the White House. If Trump is elected, this would complicate the Biden administration's efforts to secure a deal. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham says it is urgent to reach a deal before the election. Graham warns that failure to do so could jeopardize future normalization efforts. Joseph Borrell, chief of European Union foreign policy, says the European Union will not categorize the United Nations Agency for Palestinian Refugees as a terrorist organization. Borrell made the comments while speaking alongside Jordan's foreign minister in Belgium. Borrell says that the UN agency plays a crucial role in the region. He vows that the European Union will continue to support the agency. Borrell's comments come in response to recent Israeli legislative efforts to designate the agency as a terrorist entity. Israel has been trying to link the agency's employees to Hamas since the onset of war. However, it has not been able to provide concrete evidence for its allegations. Israel argues that dismantling the agency would dissolve the Palestinian refugee issue. The agency was established in 1949. It plays an integral role in providing aid in the West Bank, Gaza, Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon. Israel's military has acknowledged a critical shortage of tanks and ammunition. Media reports say the Israeli army has disclosed to the Supreme Court that many of its tanks have been damaged in the war. The military says there is a significant shortage of ammunition supplies. 
This admission comes as the army responds to a petition advocating for the inclusion of women in combat roles within the Armored Corps. An Armored Corps is a specialized military organization whose role is to conduct armored warfare. The shortage of operational tanks has hindered both military operations and plans to integrate women fighters. The Chief of Staff has postponed the deployment of women fighters until next year. Military figures show 682 Israeli soldiers have been killed since October 7th. 4,100 have been injured. New allegations have surfaced regarding severe mistreatment of Palestinian detainees held in Israeli custody. The Commission of Detainees Affairs has revealed these claims during a press conference in Ramallah. Khaled Majni, the commission's lawyer, has detailed disturbing incidents witnessed by detainees. These incidents include inmates being raped, tortured publicly, and attacked by dogs. Majni also highlighted the dire conditions at Ofer Prison. He says inmates transferred from Steve Thaman facility in Negev Desert to Ofer face horrifying ordeals. The detainees are beaten for hours and are assaulted with pistols. The prisoners are subject to degrading treatments such as forced insertion of a fire extinguisher tube. Majni says there was inadequate medical care leading to fatalities among detainees. He says the exact number of casualties has not been disclosed by Israeli authorities. Reports of torture in Israeli prisons have sparked international outcry. Rights groups condemn what they call systematic abuse by Israeli institutions against Palestinian prisoners. Former Israeli Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman has expressed concerns over the state of Israel's leadership. He says Israeli soldiers have been facing an ongoing nightmare for the past nine months. Lieberman has made these comments in an article published on an Israeli media outlet. Lieberman says Israel's economy is collapsing and its diplomatic efforts are deteriorating. He has also criticized the government's handling of tensions with the Hezbollah militant group. Lieberman is calling for discreet negotiations for prisoner releases. He predicts that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu intends to dissolve the Knesset in November. Lieberman's prediction comes as the current government faces increasing pressure for earlier elections. An investigation conducted by an American magazine, Wired, has revealed deep military connections between Project Nimbus and Israel's defense forces. Project Nimbus is a joint venture by Google and Amazon. The project is worth a $1.2 billion cloud contract with Israel. Google has been denying any connection with Israel's military. Amazon remains silent on contract specifics. Google employees have been protesting against the project. Google has used police force against protesting employees. It has also fired nearly 50 employees for speaking up against the project. On April 16th, police raided Google offices in New York and California to detain employees protesting against Project Nimbus. Employees argue it implicates Google and Amazon in mistreatment of Palestinians. Israeli officials praised Nimbus for aiding military operations. Reports suggest Israel's Ministry of Defense has direct access to Nimbus infrastructure. The Israeli army officials play an active role by participating in the project's design and operations. Canada's Crown Indigenous Relations Minister Gary Anandasangari has issued a long-awaited apology to the Dakota and Lakota First Nations for erroneously categorizing them as American refugees. The apology has been delivered after 226 years of injustice. The government acknowledges Canada's historical neglect of their land titles. The nations were defeated by Americans in the 1860s and 1870s, forcing many of them to move north. The nations were not invited to sign treaties despite their alliance in the War of 1812. They were left out of major agreements. On behalf of the Canadian government yesterday, Ananda Sangari said, you were allies, not refugees. Sophia Smoke from Dakota Plains First Nation calls the apology a significant step. 
She vows to continue advocating for justice. Chief Darcy Bear of Whitecap, Dakota, First Nation, says there is a need for equitable resolution. Discussions on compensation and future steps are yet to be carried out. Thank you for watching. Our news is produced by Muslim Network TV, which is a nonprofit organization. We need your support for donations. Please scan the QR code on our broadcast or visit muslimnetwork.tv to donate now so we can continue to amplify the voices of Muslims in Canada and abroad.